my name is Eva Bloom and welcome to this YouTube channel. I swear I don't only own one shirt, it's just that I'm matching with my nails today. <laughs> but today I was super excited to be coming at you to talk all about the wonders of queer and trans written erotica. I had the amazing opportunity to interview non-binary erotica writer spectacular Sinclair Sexsmith, and they're also an amazing kink educator. They've been in the sex industry for a long, long time, and they sat down with me to answer my questions all about queer and trans written erotica. I'm Sinclair Sexsmith. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. I'm the editor of Best Lesbian Erotica of the Year, Volume 5, which is out now from Cleus Press. I'm excited to be here and talk to you. Thank you for having me. Let's jump right into it. The first question I have is that it is a stereotype that written erotica, you see like mostly books with the ladies with their titties out and a handsome young man on the cover. There's a stereotype that it's for older, straight, cisgender women, but obviously that's not true. Can you tell us a little bit about the world of queer and trans erotica? Absolutely. Um, queer erotica and lesbian erotica specifically was my entrance into queerness. It was just how I found out that I loved women, that I was gay, that I was queer, that I was kinky. Um, queer erotica opened desires in me that I didn't know were there. And um, it was with a wide range of gender expressions of characters and authors. It was with a wide range of sex acts, a wide range of, you know, types of bodies and types of people. I think the word lesbian can get associated with older older women these days as the youth are queer and queer and queer and queer. Um, but there, there's still, for me, it's still so important to be situated in a lineage of lesbian and, and a community of lesbian. And that really resonates. And that's really feels like where my true home and where my, where my ancestry is, is with lesbians. So um, for me, it, it's a highlighter. It's a place where I will look deeper if I see that word because I want to know what kind of lesbian community, what kind of lesbian folks are using it and, and maybe they're going to be people that I resonate with. Queer erotica for me when I came out was people like Carol Queen and Patrick Califia and Laura Antonu who were writing filthy, like dirty, smutty, delicious erotic stories and uh, and novels and sharing them unapologetically uh, with the world, you know? And it felt like such a radical act to be claiming and to be expressing queer desire way I think in the in the early mid even you know late 90s especially as the AIDS epidemic was happening and um que queer desire became more scary. So the, I, I was coming out in the late 90s and the erotica boom and pressure cooker that was happening in the 90s was, was really big. So if you don't know those authors, I highly recommend looking them up. My second question is with the rise of OnlyFans and also there just being so many amazing queer video porn content creators out there in the world, is there a reason that we shouldn't forget about uh, written erotica? And specifically, are there any benefits to exploring written erotica compared to video porn for me the difference but I, I like porn um i especially like queer porn and um you know the incredible di diverse and you know body positive and kink positive things that are being resent represented in queer porn these days i think there's a queer porn revolution happening and it's very exciting to to see how it's moving and how much is progressing so uh, and I like straight porn and I like um, problematic porn sometimes. So um, I'm not against video or photo pornography. And um, erotica to me is about the internal experience of a character, of a person in their erotic desire and erotic life. And the video can't as well, sometimes can a little, but it can't as well capture the internal experience the way that writing can. Because you can literally be writing or reading what someone is thinking, where on a video you're, you're guessing, you're, you're, you're best guessing. So um, that's the thing that erotica and written erotica really brings, uh, is that 
that internal monologue, that inner dialogue that can happen. The next question I have is for folks who are new to exploring written erotica for the first time, do you have any tips on how to explore that, how to get the most out of it, how to find the type of sexy erotica that you like? Anthologies are fantastic for exploring erotica for the first time. Um, I would look at the editor Rachel Kramer Bustle who edits for Cleus Press. Um, she has done some amazing anthologies. I really like her quickies books that are like 69 short stories in one book so you can really get a sense of like what do I like? What do I not like? And they're fast. And if you don't like one, you just turn to the next one. And then you can get a sense of maybe there's patterns through the book that you like or you don't like. And maybe there's authors that if you flip to their bio in the back, they, um, they have written other books or they've edited other books or they're in other anthologies. So then go find those anthologies and take a look at those and you're bound to find something. The nice thing about erotic anthologies is that you're not committed to one single voice or one single type of sex or writer um, but then maybe when you find this the type of sex or writer that you want to be reading about you can dive in deeper into that one specifically um, aside from that I know there are a lot of erotica websites and honestly I don't read them very much but um uh, you can check out the Feminist Erotica podcast. That's a fun one too that um, is relatively new, but they have some excellent interviews and they're, they've got a whole lineup of things that they're planning to do with the series. So that's really exciting. My last question is, of course, also about uh, sex and COVID. With the COVID-19 pandemic, many folks have explored virtual sexuality, including sexting as a means to get sexy with others or creating erotica of their own. I wanted to ask, is reading erotica a good way to get inspiration for sexting? And do you have any tips for folks who are either sexting or creating their own erotica for the first time? Absolutely, reading more erotica is a great way to get inspiration. Um, you can uh, always pull in like lines from an erotic scene that you find and pull it out and then make your own erotic scene after that line. I love doing that as a writing prompt. Um, and, and even if you're not like specifically getting erotic inspiration from that specific story, just, you know, absorbing it, being in the language, being um, with writing that is explicit and is not apologetic about its wants and desires and, and you know, dirty words and queer language and pronouns and all of that um, is a great way to get more comfortable writing that kind of thing. Sexting is a little different because often it's more like porn dialogue you often, not always, right? But it's kind of a hybrid of like the dialogue during sex and the erotica, like they're not quite the same thing. So um, it's kind of a an in-between ground. But what I love about sexting is that um, it can be such a wonderful form of foreplay or such a wonderful tease and connection between people um, when they're far away. So like it can be peppered with dirty pictures. It can include audio. This is one of my favorite things to do. And this is, um, you know, just between us <laughs> is um, to be masturbating, getting off and to be telling myself a story out loud and to be recording it into my phone, into the audio file on my phone and then send that audio recording to my partner. And that is, I find just so sexy. Like, uh, you know, it usually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It kind of can skip around in time, the story, but it's just like where my brain is going and what I'm generating, um, what my, my erotic juices are generating <laughs> during getting off. And I love it. I love that practice. So maybe that's a place to start. Um, creating some of your own erotica. Thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate uh, chatting with you about queer and trans erotica. If folks want to go check them out, I will link all of their stuff in the description below. Before I sign off and before you all run out and uh, check out some queer erotica yourself, I do want to share an incredibly exciting announcement. We'll do a little drum roll, please. I am launching my first digital course. It is unsurprisingly maybe called Fuck the Patriarchy, Fuck Yourself. And it is all about unlearning all the ways that the cis heteronormative 
patriarchal idea of sexuality that we were all taught gets in the way with us exploring our authentic desires and creates all kinds of shame. So really busting through all of that and then creating some amazing foundations to foster a positive sexual relationship with yourself. So it's a 14 week course. It has eight bi-weekly live workshops and discussions as well as sexy homework assignments, really like practical things to create a pleasure practice for yourself, optional readings and additional resources, also some amazing guest speakers which are yet to be announced. It is super, super exciting. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, the program is not queer specific, but it is, this cohort is just for non-men, so women, non-binary people, gender fluid individuals, gender non-conforming people, I welcome you here. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, I will leave the link in the description. You just need to fill out a quick application and then we can jump on a call with each other to make sure that you are a great fit for the program. And if that all sounds good, we will get you enrolled and joining an, this amazing community of fuck the patriarchy, fuck yourself. So thank you so much for everybody, like for your support throughout the years. I would not have been able to launch this course without you. Um, I'm really, really grateful. But yes, if you have any questions about the course uh, or about queer erotica, please leave them in the comments below too. Um, but that is all for me today. If you want to see my face on a more regular basis, I am more active on Instagram right now. Um, but I hope that with the launch of the course, I will be able to come back to YouTube and create some more longer form content. Um, but I'm at what's my body doing on Instagram. You aren't following me there yet, but that is all for me today. Have a lovely day.